Okay, folks, now we're going to start with fluid regulation. So we're talking about um, your blood volume and your uh, salt concentration and your thirst. So we actually have two kinds of thirst. Um, the one that happens them, um, very commonly to us is osmotic thirst. So um, it's not based on, osmotic thirst isn't based on like a set exact number of water you have to have in your body um, or salt you have to have in your body. It's more like the ratio of water and salt. So when you eat something too salty, now the water in your body is too salty. So you can dilute that water and make its concentration less salty by drinking more water. So that's what osmotic thirst motivates us to do. Just drink more water and water down that salt water. We also have hypovolemic thirst though, and that has two different components. So um, we have a concentration component, but we also just have a volume component. Hypo means not enough. Volemic here refers to volume. So hypovolemic means not enough volume. You just do not have enough fluid. So if you have lost fluid for some reason, your body is gonna trigger this hypovolemic thirst. So this is why you need to hydrate properly after um, heavy exercise, being on the heat for a long period of time, diarrhea, excessive vomiting, bleeding, um, those types of things because you are triggering hypovolemic thirst. So your body detects, okay, we don't have enough fluids. So it makes sense, okay, can you just drink more water and replenish it like an osmotic thirst? What's well, part of it? But if you did drink more water to fill up this little figure here, um, what you would then have is water that's too diluted. It's too watered down and um, the salt concentration is now off. So then you would have to also take in some solutes, your electrolytes, so to speak. Although um, it's better if you just eat something with sodium and potassium in it instead of having a sports drink. So just have something salty, um, eat a pickle and a banana or something, <laughs> right? Because um, you don't need all the sugar or um, artificial sweeteners that are in sports drinks. The best hydrator is probably salt water, but that's gross. So just eat something salty and drink water. So you have different areas in your brain that are related to each of these. Uh, for osmotic thirst, just your dehydrated cells anywhere in your body um, detect this and start triggering this mechanism of, of um, osmotic thirst. For hypovolemic thirst, we also detect low volume and there's this chain reaction that's triggered by the kidneys where they release renin. Renin um, contributes to the production of angiotensin 1 angiotensin 1 then gets converted into angiotensin 2 but the long story short is that this chain reaction triggered by the kidneys helps to constrict your blood vessels now why would it do that well let's think about you know how when you have um, low water pressure in a water hose if you sort of constrict part of that water hose you can get it to shoot out at a higher pressure that's what your body is gonna do when you don't have enough fluid, don't have enough blood, but you still need to maintain the pressure to move the blood throughout your body um, so that your heartbeat is kind of strong enough to move that blood everywhere it needs to go. If you just squeeze that tube and make it a little smaller, the pressure throughout that tube is gonna increase. So um, hypovolemic thirst stimulates the subfornical organ, the SFO cells, to increase drinking as well. And then we also get sodium-specific hunger triggered. So we get thirsty, but we also get hungry for salt. Again, that's you need both of those in hypovolemic thirst. So these different organs in the brain help us with different aspects of this. Um, both the subfornical organ and our third uh, I'm sorry, and the OVLT detect our sodium content. Um, they receive signals from the digestive system, or especially the OVLT does. The subfornical organ just um, detects it through the blood. And our third ventricle detects the pressure. 
So you can see we have a system here that's going to detect everything we need and also receiving signals from the digestive system to um, trigger either osmotic thirst regulation or hypovolemic thirst regulation. We've got everything we need to detect when it's out of whack. Now the reason I have allostasis written here is that um, before your blood even has time to become too salty, your digestive system will notice, oh, you just ate a bunch of salt. You should get thirsty. Um, so it tells the OVLT, there's a lot of salt in the food. Watch out, the blood's about to get salty. We're gonna need some more water. Uh, communicates to the OVLT, which um, signals osmotic thirst and drinking behavior. Uh, another uh, um, example of allostasis, um, so as some background information, when you have hypovolemic thirst, you're going to find that um, your body, you can notice this quickly in your urine, which I know sounds gross, but Normally, if you're properly hydrated, you have a good solute balances, your body's going to be getting rid of a little bit of salt and a little bit of water. Um, so you're going to have mostly clear, maybe slightly yellow urine if you're drinking enough water, very dilute. If you drink too much water, your urine is going to be more dilute. Your body will deal with that. It will get rid of way more water and very few salts to try to make sure you have this proper water and salt concentration. You may have noticed when you've been extremely hot and not taking in enough fluids, you've been sweating a lot, that you don't urinate as much and that it will be a much darker color and much more concentrated. That's because you can't afford to get rid of fluids, but you do need to get rid of salts to maintain this concentration, right? But at the same time, you don't need to get rid of salts, so you're not going to do a lot of those either. Um, so when you have hypovolemic thirst, you may not even you may go a really long time without needing to urinate because you're sweating it all out. That's how you're getting rid of your fluids and your body doesn't need to urinate out anymore. Um, sweat. So two weeks ago, I had an example of this when I, um, an allostatic mechanism here. When I cut the tip of my thumb, um, it bled a lot <laughs> at first. And it was a shocking amount and it was kind of scary. So I perceived that blood loss and it wasn't, I wasn't hypovolemic yet. I didn't lose that much blood. Didn't really need to replenish that. It was negligible amounts, to be honest with you. It wasn't like donating blood or even getting a blood draw, probably. But my body was like, oh crap, you're losing blood. We're about to get hypovolemic thirsty. This is serious. So my kidneys constricted my blood vessels and um, also made sure that I wasn't going to be losing uh, any more fluid. So when I did, the next time I did go to the restroom, my urine was extremely concentrated um, because I couldn't afford to lose a lot of that fluid and dilute fluid. Even though I had been drinking a lot of water, um, I had had dinner not long before that, um, my body was like, we can't afford to get rid of water. You're bleeding. Your water levels are about to be low. Now, they never really were because I didn't lose that much. My body was using allostasis to anticipate the fact that my blood volume might be low soon. So again, when you have hypovolemic thirst, you need to replenish your um, salts as well as your fluid. So after you donate blood, for example, um, I always noticed that it was slightly similar to a hangover. It's sort of like a headache. It's nearly impossible to get rid of. Um, so I would drink water and water and water and not realize I was actually kind of making the problem worse. I was filling up the volume, but I was diluting this salt water in my body and I needed to replenish the salts as well. So um, again, pickle and a banana, get your sodium and your potassium and a lot of water. Now in our next segment, we're going to move on to hunger and weight regulation in a separate video. Bye for now and I'll see you back here in a moment.